Games use the memento pattern all the time. In Final Fantasy XIV, for example, players can define gear sets so they don't have to change 10 equipment slots every time they change jobs. A memento is similar to saving your game, but it's a snapshot of just one object, like a Polaroid photo. Today we're going to explore a simple memento, which is to preserve the state of hotbars and restore that state when the user wants to change loadouts. Since this kind of memento is fairly simple, I thought we could also spend a few minutes looking at drag and drop in Unity by making a little implementation that could potentially be expanded into a full system. Let's get into it. Let's have a quick look at the UI I've set up in my scene. I've created a hotbar that has a background and five UI buttons. As part of the hotbar, I have another group of buttons that will be for selecting different hotbar loadouts. Finally, for a bit of testing, I'm going to add a spellbook that is another container we can drag from to change the icons on the hotbar. Let's have a look at a diagram quickly. Storage is a basic container of any item or ability in this setup. It will hold references to all the items it contains, as well as reference to the slot each item belongs to. The item class is just a stub that represents an ability or item in the game. In this demo, it is not complete. Each UI slot will have a mouse drag component that will handle the drag and drop in the UI. Hotbar extends storage and will contain a subclass memento. The hotbar can create its own mementos which represent the state of a hotbar at a given point in time. The loadout manager will store mementos and connect to buttons in the UI so that it can select and save mementos as the hotbars change. I've already created an item scriptable object. And what we want for this demo is just to be able to get the icon sprite for this. But in the future, we'd expand it to have a targeting strategy, be able to connect to a factory for actually creating the item for us, and it'll have all the other details, prefabs, etc. The UI slot class will represent a location where we can drag and drop an item in the UI. In the hotbar, that will be on buttons. For now, it only needs to know the icon to display and keep a reference to the container it belongs to. I'm going to call the most basic container type storage. Let's move the UI slot into its own file and then create the storage class. The storage class will keep two lists, one that represents the UI slots that the player will interact with, and a list of items representing the data of each item related to the UI slot. Let's move this into its own file as well. I'm going to add a boolean that will determine if we can swap items into this container or if we can only drag out from this container like a spellbook. Then let's create the start method. Inside start will iterate over every slot and make sure to set the reference to this storage container. Then we'll add two more methods. Update UI will make sure the slot has the correct icon. And setup mouse drag will add a component that will control the drag and drop for that slot. Let's create both methods. Now, for our update UI method, let's say if the item is null, let's make sure that the sprite we're using for our item image is also going to be null. We'll just use an empty one. We can return early. Now, otherwise, we will use that sprite. What we can do actually is go back over to the item and use the required attribute from the Odin serializer to add a little bit more of a constraint there. Now for the setup mouse drag, what I'm going to do is actually add a mouse drag component, which we'll write right away that'll control all of the drag and drop for this. I'm just going to use the getter add extension method that we use a lot on this channel. And what we'll do is just assign that instance into a field here. Let's create the mouse drag class and move it over into its own file. So our mouse drag class will implement three interfaces, the iBegin drag handler, iDrag handler, and iEnd drag handler. I'm just going to implement the missing methods. So we're going to need a few references. First of all, we need to know which storage container we're coming from. We need to know which slot we're coming from. We're going to create a drag instance, and that's going to be the object that we drag around with our mouse, the visual representation of the drag. Let's create a method here so we can set at least the storage and the slot first. We'll create the drag instance when we begin the drag. Now the on drag method is actually the simplest, so let's write that first. As long as the drag instance is not null, let's make it follow around our mouse pointer. Next, let's deal with what happens when we start dragging. First of all, I want to let the storage container know that we are going to swap an item from this slot, or at least we're going to try. 
Then let's create the drag instance. So that'll be a new game object. You might as well give it a name right from the get-go. You can just give it the slot name for now. And then this is going to need an image component on it. And the image component can actually be the sprite that we're using, right? Um, so let's set a few more properties for that. Let's make sure that the raycast target is false for this. Let's also set the parent to be our storage container. Then let's change the local scale to be vector3.1. Now, it might want to scale that down a little bit in the future, but it's okay for now. When we end the drag, let's first make sure that the object being targeted is a non-null game object. And if so, we'll put it into a variable named target object. Then we can get the UI slot that's connected to this game object in the hierarchy. If the slot exists, let's call the storage container again with a reference to this target slot we want to drop onto. Otherwise, we should tell the storage container that we've dropped the object being dragged somewhere outside of a UI slot. Finally, let's destroy the object we made to drag around in the UI. So we've got two methods to make on our storage class. Let's create those quickly. Then I missed one parameter name here. And if we jump down to the on drag event, Ryder is telling me that I could use shorthand here. Personally, I don't really like the null check pattern syntax myself. Those two expressions are synonymous. I'm just going to set it back, I think. So now we can hop back over to the UI slot class and use that setup method and pass in these two arguments. So back in our storage class, let's keep a reference to the slot that we are trying to drag around. When we want to clear the swap, what we'll do is just set that value to be null. So that would be when somebody drops an icon off into the game world and it's not a droppable item, for example. Next, to facilitate our swapping of items, let's make a couple helper methods. So the first one, we could pass in a slot and get its index value in the list. Let's make another one to get an item out of its array using an index number. Let's make one more that will set an item slot if we give it an index and an item to put in there. Okay, now for some swap logic. Let's say if our swap UI slot is null, that means we haven't started dragging anything yet. So let's assign this slot into that variable. It could be the same slot as the one that we're trying to drag. So that means we're dragging an icon onto itself. So we could just set it back to empty in that case. Otherwise, we're going to attempt a swap. We want to know a little bit about each of the items being swapped. First of all, which storage do they belong to? Which index in that storage are they from? And what is the actual item at that index? Once we've got that information out, we can just check. So we're going to try and put item 2 into storage 1. We're only going to do that if it's not static. And we're going to do the opposite. We're going to try and put item 1 into storage 2. Finally, when we're done swapping, let's make sure that our swap UI slot field is null. We're done swapping. So that's just about all the logic, but I'm going to make one more class that's going to extend from storage just for our hotbar because we're going to have some memento logic in there in a moment. I'm just going to create that. I'll move it into its own file. And then there's just one more thing I want to do. Two more things, actually. I'm going to move this storage clear swap right out of this so that it's going to clear the swap every time, no matter what, when a drag ends. I'm also going to add one more line from the event system that'll make sure that our target is the one that's the selected game object. That'll make sure that the buttons are working correctly. Now we can hop back over to Unity. I'm going to add the hotbar component to the hotbar game object. I already set up all my slots to be UI slots, and I've got all my items already created as scriptable objects. So I'll just drag in all those references, and that's really it. Let's give it a try. So now that I've got the game playing, it's loaded up all my scriptable objects. And you can see I can drag them around. I can drag them out. I can mouse over everything. Looks pretty good. Let's come back out of play mode and start looking at the memento. So the reason I wanted to do a hotbar memento for this example was because it's very simple. The only thing the memento needs to remember is the list of items from the hotbar. And that's really it. So we can just have a constructor that takes in that list and we can have a get method that will return them. And every time we want to take a snapshot of our hotbar, we will just create a new memento. So to do that, let's make two methods on our hotbar. The first one will be to create a memento. It's just we'll create a new one. And then let's have another method that will accept the memento and take all the items and set up our hotbar again using that. And all we really need to do is get the items into our items list and then iterate over them and update the UI for each of the slots. I'm going to create a new list when passing in the items when creating a new memento just to make it a little more immutable. 
Let's also make a class that's going to control our three buttons that will change between our hot bars. I'm going to call that loadout manager. Our loadout manager is going to need a reference to the hot bar, and it will also need reference to all three buttons. So I'll just make an array for that. And it'll need also reference to a save button in case we want to use it. It could be optional. Let's also keep an array of the mementos that we've saved. We'll keep one for each of the hot bars. Now, I already know I'm going to have three, so I'll just preset that. And we'll have our selected loadout be at index zero. So to start with, let's iterate over each of these and let's create a memento as the default. Whatever the default state will go into each loadout. And then let's connect up a loadout button to each of the states. So we'll just pass in an index for each of those. And we'll create a little helper method, select loadout, passing in that index. And let's also connect up our save button. So for selecting the loadout, all we have to do is change our selected loadout to be the index. And then we'll set the memento on the hotbar. Save loadout, we'll just create a new memento and put it into our array. I'm just going to add some code to change the colors of the buttons to the way I want when they're clicked. And then let's get back to Unity. So back here in Unity, I'm going to grab the loadouts game object and enable it again. Then I'm going to add the new loadout manager script here. And it needs some references. So we're going to drag in the hotbar. And then let's grab all the buttons that are under here and assign them properly. First, I'll grab all the loadout buttons and put them into the array. And then I'm going to enable this save button. And I'm going to drag that in as well. Okay, buttons are looking good, but let's jump back into code quickly because one thing we could do is just every time we switch loadouts, we could just save it every time. That way the user doesn't have to actually click the save button. They change the loadout. It'll preserve its current state. Let's give it a try. So now when we start the game, our first loadout is selected by default. And we can drag a few things around. Maybe what I'll do is I'll drag... All the blue ones to be first and keep the vampire fangs in the middle. And then I'll kind of do something opposite on the second loadout. I'll keep the fangs in the middle, but I'll keep the fire icons first. So we can see one and two are kind of the opposite. And then in three, let's move the fangs to the end and the blues to the front. And then every time I switch, it's saving the memento every time and loading up the next one, right? So the save icon works, of course, but we don't really need it anymore. So I can come out of play mode and actually just disable that again. And that makes things a little bit simpler. Now, why don't we take this one step further with the spell book? Now, the spell book, I've already set up all my slot UIs. So all we need to do is add a storage here. I'm going to make it static because I don't want the player to be able to drag into the spell book. But all we have to do here is add all of our references. So I'm going to grab all the slots that are under the spell book here and I'll drag them in. And then I have eight scriptable objects for abilities that I'll put in here as well. And so without any further changes, I should be able to drag anything out of the spell book onto my bars. Now, let's start here. I'll just start replacing icons a little bit, moving things around so they're all unique. Put some of these new icons into each of the bars. Maybe this gold one can come in here. Let's put a bunch of new ones in this one, actually. Yeah, okay. So this one's three is very different now. So this looks good. They're all loading up the way we expect, right? So from here, you can incorporate this into your entire save game operation. When you're saving for the player, you also save the mementos. So when they come back to the game, they just get all their hot bars back. And then you can do the same thing for your gear sets. Uh, or anything else that needs to save state in your game. That could be puzzles. It can be things like checkpoints. It could be anything that requires an undo redo mechanic. Sometimes using a memento for undo redo is easier than using the command pattern because you don't have to come up with a custom undo function for every command. You're just moving back to a previous state in time. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next. Like, subscribe, and then click on one of these boxes on your screen, and I'll see you there.